If the purpose of the people of manufacturing is to reset the value of skilled trade, we want to show you what it takes to become a real welder. We want to show you what it takes to become a real machinist. We want to show you what it means to have robots on a manufacturing plant floor and the jobs that are created because of it. On how it's allowed a manufacturer to reduce their bottom line and hire more high dollar wage positions and train from within on things that you would never learn at school. So these robots are creating new jobs in different areas and we want to show you how and the biggest difference between man versus robot. Greg Sirio here with the people of manufacturing here in front of Sunny's, the car wash factory, here to talk to Kenny Partnan about robots in manufacturing. Is it taking jobs or is it creating jobs? We're here to find the truth. Let's go. Robots are the future. Kenny Partinen. I'm the uh, second shift shop supervisor here, and I think you're going to learn that there's a lot less skill required to utilizing the robot than you think. It's really easy. However, there's certainly a lot of skill when there comes to manual welding, and you're going to be really, really blown away by what you find. So out. integrating robotics in your manufacturing process actually creates new high-paying jobs for the manufacturer. It also allows for accountability and new job creation because after each one of these pieces of aluminum extrusion turns into a car wash and it's shipped out of here, it's creating new jobs after it leaves. So let me ask you, does robots replace the job or does the robot help create jobs? Are you ready to weld something? Am I? <laughs> there are switches on the back. They're called dead man switches. They are to prevent you from being a dead man. Imagine that. They're Much a, appreciated, sir. They're a three position switches. So no matter what I press over here, nothing will happen unless I'm holding one of these switches. I did say it was a three position switch, so this is one position. The middle is the second position. Squeezing too tight is the third position. Ah. So, what do most people do when they panic? They clinch up. Scream. They scream, they clinch up, they cry, whatever. I need to hold this in the middle to operate this robot. If this is crushing me, I'm being electrocuted, I will clinch and the robot will stop, the electricity will ah. stop, all that stuff will stop happening. So this is a very important safety mechanism. So in, is the robot. in the event our robot overlords take over, that's how we get them to stop? We either let go or squeeze the crap out. Okay, got it. So, <laughs> you'll notice when I hold this dead band switch in the middle, my red lights go away, all the alarms disappear. When I let go, I have an alarm again. All right, I'm holding it, everything goes good. I squeeze too hard, I get more alarms. You should practice. I like to use my left hand because I'm going to actually have to hold the shift button at the same time. So I have to hold the dead man switch, hold shift, and we're going to tap forward to make this robot start moving. It's going to start executing that program. Greg Serio here, and I'm about to go man versus robot. What do I do now, Kenny? Watch it weld. Can I let go? When you let go, it stops. Ah. All right, stop. Good time. What did it do? That's awesome, Kenny. Here at Sunny's, they employ over 200 people, and they're growing, and they can't find people to fill their jobs because of the skill level that goes into it. So it's harder to integrate more robots, even though the robot just wants to help. Now that we finished on the robotic welding arm with Kenny, we're over here in cell number three of 20 to show you what a skilled welder is doing here at Sunny's, the car wash factory. Let's go check in with Kenny, see if he's ready. You're going to have some fun. You're going to take this torch and you're going to be 45 degrees in between these two joints, right? Mm -hmm. And the torch is going to be tilted forward a little bit. It's called a push angle. That way the gas can get in front of that molten puddle and make it all nice and pure. So that way your puddle stays nice. So what? you're not going to want to drag this way. You're going to want to push into it. 
So kind of like this? Yes. But... Yep, you can go, pause, go, pause, go, pause to make your ripples, and that'll work just fine. All right, let's try this. You can do a little bit, and then stop and evaluate, and try it a little bit, a little bit, and go down the line. So just pull the trigger, and then pull go. Pull the trigger, and electricity will start. Let go, and stop. So you start, you pulled out, just don't pull the torch out. You can let go of the trigger and keep it there. But you were pretty close. All right. There you go. Let's try this again. So you can see your mulch here in there. It's, it's not like the whole part isn't melting. That's that's fine. But you need to be really consistent all the way along there to make it look uniform. Got it. And it's certainly a skill that's developed and acquired with a lot of practice <laughs> to develop the consistency along that weld joint. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some of the ones in here. It just looks like a straight line. Yep. Those guys have been doing this for... I can... this gear off to ask Kenny a couple questions about what it takes to become a welder. So on all of the big components of the car wash, the human definitely wins that battle because they can actually reach and move, maneuver and think and find all those different nooks and crannies that you would have had to program the robot arm to do. Certainly. A, a human needs to be involved all the time, even in robot welding. So if I were to try to make one of these larger components with a robot, I need to be able to assemble those parts together, hold them there, program the robot to produce those welds, and then I need to get the material off the robot to put more material on. There's just such a huge undertaking from the material handling standpoint that it makes sense for us to have a human assemble the job on horses, weld it, move it out to the aisle, send it out to the wash area, and it's a really quick process compared to the whole lengthy process of making that happen from an automation standpoint. Got it. So to become a welder, what credentials or certifications are you looking for when you're in the hiring process? I'm looking for somebody who is certified with the AWS um, to explain that they do know how how to actually weld, how to use the equipment, they're familiar with the tools and the PPE necessary. However, if somebody's just gone through a simple certification and they don't even have any experience, we're very willing to hire them as well because we do a lot of training here. We work with like an electric, we work with our more experienced guys and they bring our guys up to the level that they need to be to be the best in the industry to make parts that are high quality, that are 100% Warranty to our customers yep. and well, really good product. No, oh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I'm just kind of blown away of what you guys do here on a daily basis, anyway. But for you to take the time to show us that difference, I mean, it, it, there's a huge value, especially to, if you're watching, understanding that there's three different jobs we just talked about your welder, your robot programmer and your robot operator, which could lead into many more other positions. So, thanks, Kenny. You're welcome. For more information on building car washes, go to sunnydirect.com.